let's continue on with our discussion for adding and subtracting fractions. So when we were adding and subtracting, we remember that we need to have common denominators. So do we have common denominators here? No. no. Can we get common denominators? Of course we can. That's yeah. right, of course we can. Now, I've shown you several ways of getting common denominators. Um, but here's something I think that's probably the easiest way of doing that. Can you guys see what the uh, common denominator, or what, me, what the common factor is between these denominators? Five. They have a common denominator of five, right? So let's kind of write that underneath here. Maybe that'll help you out. So I can rewrite both of these as five times something, right? 20 is five times what? Yeah. And 45 is five times nine. nine. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle the five because they already have that in common. And the trick that I was just showing you on the board is since four and nine don't have anything in common, you can use those to get your common denominator. So what factor is missing here? He's got the four, he just doesn't have what? Nine. He doesn't have the nine, so I can multiply this by nine over nine. What factor is missing for the seven over 45? He's missing the four that this guy has. And if you don't believe that this is correct, check out the factors. The factors here would be five times four times nine. And the factors here are five times nine times four. So it's the same set of factors, just in a different order, right? And since it's multiplication, the order doesn't matter. So, what is my common denominator? And here's the thing, you can either do 20 times 9, or you can do 45 times 4. It doesn't matter which way you go here, because you still get the same number. What is it? 180. 180. I did 20 times 9. I thought that would be the easiest <coughs> one to do. So this is 180. Now, what are the numerators? What do you get from here, and what do you get from here? 45 plus 28. So 45 plus 28. And then what's 45 plus 28? 73. We get 73. Now you can try to reduce 73 over 180. It won't simplify. 73 is prime. So. I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but this is your answer. Any questions about that? I mean, you didn't have to do it this way, but I think this is probably the best way of doing it. Some of you may prefer writing this more in a column format, and we'll be doing that a little bit later today. You have 5 over 20 plus 7 over 45. The goal here, really, the most important thing is can you get a common denominator? If you can look at the factors like we showed you, then you know that what's missing here was that factor of 9 over 9 and you're missing a factor of 4 here. So this guy becomes, again, 45 over 180 plus, and the other guy is 28 over 180. Since these guys have the same denominator, you keep that same denominator, and you have the answer that we had above, 73 over 180. Still the same thing. Some of you just may write it differently. But again, the thing that I think gets most students is, how do we get the common denominator? What's the trick? OK, let's try, now let's try this. 7 over 18 minus 13 over 
remember, if you're adding and subtracting, you have to have common denominators. And that's the only time we have to have a common denominator is when we're adding and subtracting. So some of you may be able to look at 18 and 24 and come up with the LCD. Others, it may take a little bit more work. But if you remember the, what I just showed you above, factor these guys and see what the common factor is. What's the common factor for 18 and 24? Common factor is 6. 6 is the largest number that goes into 18 and 24. So I can rewrite 18 as 6 times what? 6 mm -hmm. times 3 and 24 is 6 times what? Okay. So circle what is already common and then you put in those missing factors. So what's missing for the first guy? What's his first fraction missing? He's missing that, common, the, or that factor of 4. And what is the second fraction missing? Three. He's missing that factor of 3. But what is that common denominator? You can either do 18 times 4 or 24 times 3. Whichever one you do, you should still get the same answer, which is what? 72. Yes, 72. And so what does your numerator look like whenever you do the rest of this work? What do you get? 7 times 4 is? 28. 28. Don't forget this is a minus. So minus 13 times 3? It's 39. And what's 28 minus 39? Well, it's negative 11, right? Now, we could write this. We could say negative 11 over 72. But I've shown you that the best way of writing a negative fraction like this <laughs> is to put the negative in front of the fraction bar and say negative 11 over 72. This is the way we would write that. And this guy is in lowest terms. There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing common between 11 and 72. What do you guys think? It's OK? Now, just to go a little bit further here, talking about least common multiples and common denominators, if you take 18, 18 is made up of 2 times 9, but 2 times 9 is 2 times 3 times 3, right? 24, you already see how this guy's broken down by 6 and 4. That's 2 times 2 and 2 times Three. And I'm just putting this in order of, for the prime factors. See, the 4 is 2 times 2, and the 6 is 2 times 3. Are there factors that are already common between these two numbers? What's common? They have a pair of 2s already that's common. They have a pair of 3s that's common, right? Do they have anything else that's common between them? No. So if I'm trying to find that least common multiple, or the LCD here, I take this stuff, and I would have to apply it to this number. So what's 2 times 2? 4. And you saw that with the 18, I had to put in the missing factor of 4, right? And 18 had this factor of 3, and this guy had to be applied to 24. And you see that happening right here. So the least common multiple of these guys would be the 2 and the 3 that was already common to both of them, right? And then you had this factor of 3 for the 18 and you had these two factors of 2 from the 24. And when you multiply all of this together you, you get 72. And so this is a way of finding that common multiple or the common denominator strictly by looking at the prime factorizations of these numbers. Your common multiple, or your LCD, has to include both of these numbers. So here is 18, and the 24 is included with the three factors of 2 and the 3. Oops. So 
72 contains 18 and it contains 24. Now, is 72 the only common denominator for 18 and 24? No. There is no greatest common denominator. But you want to go for the least common denominator because it keeps your numbers small. And here's the thing. If you have a common denominator that's not the LCD, there will be simplifying to do at the end. And you don't want to make your life more difficult. All right, what numbers sound, sound good to you? Okay, sure, we'll, gotta go, we'll go with that. Sounds good. We'll do 11 twelfths plus, what was the number that you guys said? That's right, 5 over 7. Look at these denominators. Are they the same? No. But I can get them to be the same. Do 12 and 7 have a common factor? What's the largest number that goes in there? Well, the largest number that goes into both of them is 1, right? Which means that 12 and 7 are relatively prime. And if that's the case, the really easy way of getting that common denominator is to just multiply times the other denominator. So multiply times 7 over 7. Multiply this guy times 12 over 12. Because isn't 12 over 7 the same as 7 times 12? I said over, didn't I? 12 times 7 is 7 times 12. What's 7 times 12? Or 12 times 7 if you know that one better. It's 84. So then what's the first numerator that you get? 77. That's 77, and then 5 times 12 is what? That's 60. So all together, what do we have? You guys get 134? 37? Man, I wouldn't say that my problem is I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm just going to say my problem is that I woke up. Do you all agree with 137 over 84? Do these guys have any common factors? Or is this in lowest terms? You're just going to say lowest terms, right? Sounds good, feels good. So this is good, right? So that's all that we can do. That's a horrible 137, but it is what it is. Now, what kind of fraction is this? Improper. And I know how you guys feel. You feel like improper fractions are wrong because they're improper. I don't, I don't agree with that. But what we like to do is we like to turn We like to turn improper fractions and we want to convert them to mixed numbers. We're going to take improper fractions and convert them to mixed numbers.